I'm finally up and running with the MakerBot Replicator 2 and as you see I've actually been able to print uh, one quad arm for the Blade MQX and I want to take you through the process from start to finish of actually measurement of the arm. This is the previous arm that's pretty much shredded. I believe that's fiberglass, pretty rigid. And then uh, from measurement to design, you know, it's a really basic design, thankfully. I wanted to do something that would be, that uh, I could declare success with. So after we get the um, design completed, we'll convert it to G-code and then we'll print it and put it on our quad. But yeah, that's this is one of the uh, finished parts. Now, if you'll notice, if this is PLA plastic. It's a little bit, you know, it flexes a little bit, as you can tell, but I think, you know, for the just the weight, the light weight of this quad and the minimal thrust of these rotors, it should be just fine. Okay, so initially what you do, as you notice the arm's missing, I pulled it out. That's what we're gonna replace, but if you notice right here, this is just a, the wires run across the top and this arm just slides right out. And you know, it'll take a little bit of force, but once you get it out, um, you should be able to be at a position where you can measure it. And I actually use these calipers to measure the dimensions of that arm. And you'll notice they're actually 2.2 by 2.2 millimeters square. As you can see, I mean, it's tiny. And then almost 90 millimeters long. So those are kind of the parameters that we'll use uh, when, when designing this. We're gonna design it in a basic program called, uh, made by Autodesk called 123D Design. And one other thing I wanna point out is actually, if you look down the length of this arm, and as you'll notice, there's no wires showing along the arm. So the arm actually, the design has a, just a cylindrical hole all the way down the shaft and the wires kind of run from the uh, controller down the shaft to the motor. And we'll actually walk through um, designing that as well. We're in Autodesk 123D Design. It's actually a free download, so you should check it out. I've played with quite a few uh, different uh, 3D design programs and this is probably one of the easiest to get started with. Um, it's right up there with Google SketchUp, actually. So what we're going to do is, if you recall, I had the uh, calipers. I measured the Blade MQX arm. We're just going to create a box. And that box is actually going to be, say, 2.2 millimeters high, 90, actually 89 millimeters long, and then 2.2 for the width. So it's actually a a rectangular arm so we're going to get it zeroed in and then we'll hit enter actually move that over okay next up we're going to go ahead and create cut a hole right here all the way through uh, the boom that's just where our little uh, motor wires are going to be so we're going to create a cylinder and what's cool about this is let's get the um we'll say a height of just, that doesn't really matter right now, a radius of half a millimeter. And what's cool is that this will actually snap to whatever side or um, face that you're, you're over. So if you look at here, as I move my cursor up, it snaps right to the middle of that uh, face. Okay, so we have that. That looks pretty good right in the middle. The next thing we're going to do is use this uh, nifty tool called extrude. And so what extrude will do is it'll actually allow you to pull uh, the cylinder further out or push it in. And what we want to do is we're going to select the face of the cylinder. And you'll notice this little arrow I can grab and push either way. I'm going to change the uh, setting to cut and then for distance we know that the arm is 89 millimeters let's just do since we're going backwards we're going to do negative 100 
that could be whatever you want. You could actually manually drag it through if you want. And I'm just going to hit enter. And now you can see that we uh, have our boom nicely designed. And uh, we'll go ahead and save that. So what I'm going to do now is this is actually a feature that's new to 123D design as of um, the past week. Uh, it's it's the ability to export to an STL file. So I'm just going to call it blade arm. I've already saved one, and I'll just uh, save that. And now the ST, STL file has been exported and ready for us to load and convert to G-code. Okay, this is the MakerWare software, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to load uh, the STL file that we just exported from 123D design. So we have blade arm and you'll notice it down here. Looks good. You can see our little hole. And what we can do with the maker where is when the replicator 2 is powered up, we'll see it over here and then we'll click make it and begin our print. So we'll go ahead and click make it and we'll just do medium quality for now. That's fine. Uh, none of these fancy options. Our material is PLA. We will click make it and kick off the process. Okay, now what you're, what you're hearing is the, the build platform loading and we're going to uh, get a progress of the extruder. So the extruder needs to be able to heat up uh, before the printing can pr begin. So we're at 100 degrees Celsius of 230. Okay, so we're at 220 of 230. So getting real close to the ideal temperature. And here shortly we should see the uh, build platform lift up and here we go. We're about 50% complete and as you can see there's definitely a blade arm is coming to life. And there's our completed arm. And here in just a second we'll pull it off the platform and clean it up. And that was a build time of four minutes. So that's I'd say that's a pretty quick turnaround if you have a broken arm. I mean this was a tiny arm obviously but um, still not too bad. Pull our arm off. It's a little sticky. And we'll do a little cleanup, but as you can see, there is a little hole down the middle. We'll get to see that here in a little bit. That will run our uh, motor wires from the flight controller down to the motor. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you just kind of the breakdown, because it's not as easy as it looks to, to put these arms on. So I pulled the arm out, and when you do that, you can then disconnect there's a two-prong plug here. You'll be able to disconnect that from the flight controller. And so if you notice on the flight controller, there's going to be four sockets for each of the motors. You're going to have this heat shrink tube that comes right over these uh, solder joints. And the reason you need to basically desolder you need to be able to pull this plug off so that we can ultimately get these wires down the tube uh, then mount them back into the blade frame. Okay, I've gone ahead and desoldered the plug and removed the heat shrink tubes and now I've gone ahead and begun just threading the uh, motor wires through the, the 3D printed arm that we just did. So you can kind of see that coming through. Next is I'll actually slide the uh, boom all the way down and we'll open this guy up. It kind of pops open. And we can just slide it through like that. We'll pull, pull the wire through as tight as we can. And then as you notice, there's just a little place right here where this arm or boom just slides right in. So now we'll just slide this P3 
piece back into place nice and snug and all we have left to do is I'll go ahead and uh, re resolder that plug to our leads and then we'll um, mount this other end of the arm and wire up uh, the motor to the flight controller and we should be ready to give this a test flight. Okay, I have everything pieced back together with the two 3D printed booms from the Replicator 2. They look, actually, it looks pretty good. One thing I want to you know, point out before I do this test flight is these guys were done with um, in the settings of MakerWare you have a setting called infill and by default it's 10% and that actually tells you the percentage of uh, plastic or PLA that this thing gets filled with so the higher that percentage uh, the more rigid the arm becomes and if you look in this in this case you know you can see there's a bit of flex in that in that arm versus the standard uh, fiberglass I believe these are fiberglass arms there's really no flex at all so that'll be an interesting test and you know after I do the flight you know we'll, we'll take a look at it and then we'll just decide hey if I need to uh, do another print you know I'm con this is a learning ongoing learning experience but uh, if I knew it, need to do a print I know that I can uh, bump up the infill and hopefully get a more solid and rigid uh, boom. Okay, I'll just start with a simple hover and see how everything looks yeah it's definitely it's a little hard to control it's kind of going all over the place so as you can see that that back right arm boom is definitely got a lot of vibration in it and that, I mean that vibration could be coming from the prop so you know after doing a few flights I could tell that this back uh, right arm was really struggling it was just vibrating a ton and so the the actual um, controller on the board was trying to compensate for that and I couldn't really gain control this thing just went pretty much full throttle every time uh, to compensate so you know all in all I've, th that's kind of my first print my first experience with doing a you know pretty basic quad part the design you know as we saw was was really straightforward you know you can't it doesn't get much easier than printing a, a rectangle piece of plastic but um, I think there's a lot to be learned from just modifying or getting the proper settings down when printing because you know, as we all know, if we're doing quad parts, um, that they have to be pretty durable, pretty rigid and durable. So uh, we'll get there over time, but I hope at least this was useful to kind of see the process I went through, and I'll continue to tweak and um, post updates, you know, as, as I uh, figure out the proper settings. So that's it for now, and uh, thanks for watching.